Lauren Booth ist vor einem Jahr zum Islam konvertiert. Sie ist die Schwägerin von Ex-Premierminister Tony Blair. Sie musste dies am eigenen Leib erfahren. Sie ist eine bekannte Journalistin und als ihre Konversion bekannt wurde, haben die Medien sie durch den Dreck gezogen. Sie wird uns heute einige, äh, einige Erfahrungen preisgeben. Begrüßen Sie mit mir aus England angereist Lauren Booth. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Assalamu alaikum. Bonjour. Et grüzi. Yes, it's true. A year ago, I was not a Muslim, and I never could see that I would be wearing a scarf. But you know, funny things happen in your life. And I'm in a very good position, alhamdulillah, to look from outside into Islam and from Islam out. I have been to Palestine many times. I have lived for a time in the Middle East. But the media coverage in the West and in Europe and America amazes me. Islam has the coverage so much that other, that other religions could be jealous of if it wasn't so bad all the time. The mainstream media portrays Islam, portrays Muslims, as either in need of help, starving Somalians, Gazans on the rubble of their homes, or in need of our pity, women who would wear Gucci bikinis if only they could be rescued from their burqa and their terrible husbands. You non-Muslims who watch the mainstream news and read the newspapers must have a very bad image of us. We don't blame you, we really don't. You see, just five years ago, I was Islamophobic, only I didn't know it. It wasn't until in 2000, I was watching a television news bulletin on the BBC that I realized that I did not have the full world view. There was a young boy, his name was Faris Oday. He was 14 years old and he appeared on my television screen. And Faris Oday had a stone in his hand. He was from the Gaza refugee camp and an Israeli tank was coming towards him. And as I sat in my comfortable chair in my French house, The woman on the BBC seemed to say, look at that terrorist boy. Look at that wonderful tank. Look at the Jewish saviors. Look at the Muslim aggressor. But all I could see was a boy with a stone, afraid, trying to protect his family in any way he could. And so I became curious. We can remember in the 1970s a photograph of the young girl in Cambodia. She had napalm on her back and she was running screaming from American fires. Well, that image changed the world. We should all know the name of Faris Oday as we know the name of Anne Frank. For 10 days after that photograph of the Muslim boy with the stone who was bad. He was shot in the neck by an Israeli sniper and he died aged 14. That was my first awakening to how we are misled concerning who is the aggressor in the world and who is the victim in our world. It took me until 2005 though to have the courage to go to Palestine. I went to cover the elections there 
when Mahmoud Abbas was elected. And it wasn't until I passed my first checkpoint, a checkpoint that revealed to me the people there are living under apartheid, that I realized that I was afraid of Arabs and I was scared of Muslims. And guess what? Arab Muslims with guns, even in their own country, really scared me. At one point, I found myself in a lift with the guards for Mahmoud Abbas because I was going to interview him. Very tall Palestinian guards there to protect the next president. One of them said into their walkie-talkie, Bukra, inshallah, Assalamu alaikum. And in my mind, I thought, I've seen this film, and it doesn't end well for the white woman. Perhaps all the brother was saying was, how is your son? Happy birthday. But so ingrained had the idea of Islam and terrorism and Arab terrorism been in me, that even when I was in Palestine that first day, I had doubts. But alhamdulillah, 24 hours in the Holy Land with the best Muslims in the world. And I realized there was a whole other world out there. And I never had that fear again. I only had a love for the people of Palestine and an understanding of their struggle, inshallah. In 2007, 2006, I was invited to Lebanon to make a television interview. And at Beirut airport, I was met by four young women in hijab. Now, I didn't know much about women in the hijab because when I toured Palestine, being a journalist, I was an honorary man. So I hung around with men and the men showed me round and I didn't really meet the women enough on that first trip. But in Beirut in 2006, I was met by very strong sisters in the hijab. Sisters who were studying at some of the best universities in the Middle East at a very high level. And they talked to me about their freedoms. They talked to me about how men were kept at an arm's distance. And I thought, that sounds good. They talked to me about how they were going to get educated, make their own choices in life, but with a respect and love for their religion. I thought, that sounds good. And I thought of the girls that I see at colleges in England, drunk, showing their bodies to get male attention, not getting respect in their classes for their brains and their minds, not being encouraged by society to use their faces and their words instead of their bodies. And I realized that I had hijab envy. It's a little known condition whereby a woman from the West wants to cover up more. Maybe it only happens when you reach middle age, I don't know. But alhamdulillah, when I came back to England, I tried to get this little nugget of information about hijab into the newspapers. But no one would print it. Not one magazine, not one Sunday magazine, not one national newspaper. Nobody would listen to a woman from the West applauding the hijab as modesty. The problem with the media today is simple. They have made such a strong argument that Islam is evil. They have made such, built up such a, a lie about the people of Islam that they can't now tell the truth. To suddenly say to people in Europe, um, actually, all the people who follow Islam in Europe, they're really nice people, they're family people, you should respect them, would be like reading all of the Harry Potter books getting to the end and finding out Voldemort was a goodie. It's not possible for them to do it, even the editors who want to do it. What I've seen in my career is that the attention levied on, 
<coughs> levied on Islam and Muslims most often takes the form of blowing a major story out of all proportion. This is done to mislead the public, to bring in an environment of fear across Europe and America. I'll give you an example. Anybody remember the Ground Zero Mosque controversy in America? That story was whipped up by right-wing bloggers and Islamophobes. And it was picked up by CNN, NBC, and Fox News and became the Ground Zero Mosque controversy. In fact, what was happening was that an approved Islamic center was going ahead with the blessing of the government. But that didn't matter. It was disrespecting the dead of 9-11. It was Muslims dancing on the graves of Americans. How did we get into a situation where a crazy blogger, a nobody, who describes in her own country Barack Obama as a drug-dealing jihadist, that she's making the news. And people believe this about Islam. Brothers and sisters, we have to forgive the people around us who may look at us aggressively. Because really, if I just read the press, I'd be afraid of me. So what began as a laughable tirade becomes mainstream news. So I want to ask all of those who are from Bern here today, do you ever ask yourself if you know enough about Islam to react with fear to the people you see today? Because I have to tell you, walking around this beautiful city center this morning, I felt really, really uncomfortable. I've been very, very shocked today by the aggressive frowns that I've received from the people of Bern. I'm really disappointed by my fellow Europeans. Because I lived in France up until two years ago and could walk everywhere but without a hijab, I was one of you. Now with this on my head, I'm someone you fear. So what I'd like to ask the people of Bern and Switzerland today is this. Do you think you know enough about Islam to hate it? Do you really think you know enough about Muslims to be afraid of us? Because the definition of a phobia is an irrational fear based on little to no knowledge. So if you fear Islam, if you're standing here today in the crowd and you feel a bit queasy or afraid by men in beards and women in hijab, Alhamdulillah, we understand. But can I ask you this? Have you ever come to our homes? Have you ever had a Muslim teacher in your school? Have you ever visited a mosque or read a piece of literature about Islam? Because otherwise you don't know us. And if you knew us, you would have nothing to fear. Last year has been uh, an incredible experience for me, alhamdulillah. Traveling around America in hijab is very interesting. Islamophobia is in your face in America, To some, certainly when you go on the airlines. At, at every major airport, when I travel inside America, I get patted down. You know this? The pat, Madam, can we just pat you down? We're just going to pat you down, ma'am. This is done to create fear amongst other travelers. It's not to keep you safe. This is done to make us feel humiliated. It is not done to make us feel better. 